Hey, what's up guys, Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all new HP Spectre X360. All right, let's get started. For spring 2015, HP has launched the all new HP Spectre X360. HP and Microsoft has worked on this project for some time now. Together, they're trying to make the best Ultrabook out there. They're looking at every corner of this laptop to improve the overall user experience. For example, they removed the hard disk status indicator to improve battery performance, adjusted fan noise levels, and they even worked together to improve wireless performance. The pricing is very competitive. The base model starts at $899 US and that gets you a Core i5-5200U, 4GB of RAM, 128GB SSD, and a Full HD touchscreen panel. For an additional $100, you can get a 256GB SSD and 8GB of RAM. That's going to be the best choice in terms of price and performance. My model features a Core i7, 8GB of RAM, and a 256GB SSD. This model will set you back $1149 US. The fully loaded version will be available in April, and that will give you a Quad HD panel and a 512GB SSD. That model will set you back $1399 US. You can get these laptops at HP.com or your local Best Buy. The design and build quality of the new Spectre X360 has been spectacular. You get a full CNC aluminum body that just feels premium. HP has also engineered the hinges to feel more durable while rotating through the four multiple modes. Now the weight comes in at 3.26 pounds and measures 15.9 millimeters. It's a little heavier than the Dell XPS 13 and the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro, but in return you get a durable construction build that feels and looks incredible. And for this year, HP is streamlining all their high-end products with the Hillard Packard logo instead of the usual HP logo. The keyboard flex is actually pretty good. I had to press down very firmly to get it to flex. I've been highly impressed with the build quality in this notebook, and the screen flex is very minimal as well, so there's nothing to worry about there. Since this is a 2-in-1 convertible, let's take a look at the four modes we have here. The first mode, obviously, is our laptop mode, followed by our stand mode. This mode will be highly useful for watching movies or working on presentations, followed by the tent mode. This mode will work best for Windows touch-based games and more. And last but not least is our tablet mode. I personally find this mode kind of cumbersome because of its weight and size. So there you have it, those are the four multiple modes on the all new HP Spectre X360 laptops. Now HP is being very kind to its consumers. They are throwing in a free sleeve to protect this beautiful aluminum finish. The fit and finish is nice, but it offers minimal protection. However, the purpose of this case is to prevent scratches. Let's take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Here you got your AC charging port, exhaust port for your fan, USB 3.0 port, power button, and an SD card reader. Now here's a quick shot of an SD card inserted in. And as you can see here, it's not flush mount with the laptop, but it doesn't stick out too much either. On the right side, you got your Windows Home button for tablet mode, as well as your volume up and down button, mini display port, full-size HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports, and a headset microphone jack combo. HP has done an excellent job with the panel selection on X360 Spectre. The resolution is 1920 by 1080p. There will be a Quad HD panel available soon. I personally prefer the 1080p panel because you get better battery life, and the text is pretty sharp. The colors, contrast ratios, and brightness levels have been great. My Spider 4 Pro colorimeter measured 96% of sRGB and 76% of Adobe RGB, which puts this panel right up there with the best ultrabooks on the market like the Dell XPS 13, Samsung Book 9, and the MacBook Pro Retina. For you photographers out there that want an accurate color display, then you will be highly satisfied with the color saturation on this notebook. The viewing angles on this 13.3 inch IPS panel has been great. Whether you're working on a project with coworkers or watching a movie in bed, this panel offered very good angles to view your content. The only con I have on this panel is how reflective it is. If you're working by windows or bright lighting situations, I would keep that in mind while shopping for this notebook. I just wish HP offered an anti-glare model. Touchscreen performance has been good. Scrolling and multi-touch gestures have been smooth and precise. And with Windows 8.1, having a touchscreen makes it more of an enjoyable experience. The keyboard is pretty good for an Ultrabook this size. The keys have a decent key travel, in fact it offers 1.5mm of key travel, which is slightly better than the Dell XPS 13, which offers 1.3mm of key travel. The overall size feels roomier as well, and that's a good thing. The tactile feedback feels great, and I actually enjoy typing on this keyboard. So if you want a bigger keyboard with a little more travel, then you should take a look at this notebook. The only con I have is the color choice of the keys. For example, with the backlight on, it's kind of hard to read the keys with a silver on silver finish. I just wish HP chose a darker text or a different color keyboard to make it easier to read. There is only one choice for the backlit keyboard, either on or off. I was really hoping HP would at least give us two options like low and high for the brightness settings. The new Spectre X360 features a humongous trackpad. The size is almost identical to an iPhone 6. 
This year, HP has also removed the control zone features to make your trackpad experience better. The trackpad was good for the most part. Multi-touch gestures were precise, but the two-finger scrolling did give me some issues every now and then. For example, when scrolling on a website with two fingers, the trackpad would sometimes quit scrolling and move the cursor all the way down instead. That issue also occurred while trying to click on applications. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but hopefully when Windows 10 launches, we will have the ability to run the Microsoft Precision Trackpad drivers, which is found on the Dell XPS 13. Next up, here's a quick test of the HD webcam in action. Hey, what's up YouTube? Andrew here, testing out the webcam quality on the new Spectre X360. Let me know what you guys think. With the 3-cell 56 watt hour battery pack, the battery performance has been great. I've been averaging around 8-9 to nine hours out of a full charge, with screen brightness at around 60%. And that was with casual web browsing, mixed video streaming, and some word processing. Keep in mind your usage will vary depending on the type of programs you are running. Processing performance comes from the latest Broadwell U processors. My notebook featured the Core i7-5500U. You get a base clock speed of 2.4GHz with a turbo boost up to 3GHz. From basic productivity like web browsing to programming code, this CPU has been quick and responsive. As I said earlier, you may want to stick with the Core i5-5200U found in the base or mid model. That model will give you the best bang for your buck since all these CPUs are dual core ultra low voltage. And for the Geekbench 3 performance score, this is a 64-bit version here. For the single core score, I got 3080. And for the multi-core performance, I got just over 6400. Next up, we have Cinebench R15 with a CPU score of 284 CB. And our last CPU benchmark is PC Mark 8. Home Accelerated Test, I got a score of 2,953. With the new Broadwell CPUs, you also get the all-new Intel HD Graphics 5500. You can expect a 15-20% to 20 performance increase from the previous Intel HD 4400. And here's some benchmarks for the 3D Mark Advanced Edition. For the Skydiver Test, I got a score of 2,818, followed by CloudGate with a score of 5,446. And our last benchmark here is Cinebench R15 OpenGL Test, I got a score of 31.06 frames per second. These are some pretty impressive scores for an integrated graphics card like the Intel HD 5500. Now with these kind of scores you can expect to play games like Minecraft, League of Legends on medium to high settings, and for games like Counter Strike and The Sims 4 will be playable on very low settings. Just don't expect to play games like Battlefield 4 and Far Cry 4 because those games are very demanding. Now here's a shot of the internal components of the Spectre X360. The RAM is soldered on board so make sure you choose either 4 or 8GB of RAM based on your usage. First up, you have your 256GB MSATA SSD. The performance has been very quick, the boot up times and overall system response has been great. Now keep in mind, the 128GB SSD is going to be a little bit slower than the 256GB drive. Followed by your Intel Dual Band Wireless HC7265 with Bluetooth 4.0. The range has been good and the connection has been solid. As many of you guys know, the Intel 7265 is one of my favorite wireless cards for 2015. The fan noise levels has been excellent. During casual web browsing, you can't even hear the fan running. The only time you can hear it running is when you're watching an HD video or intense CPU applications. Even when it's running full throttle, the sound is very smooth and not disturbing. So you can thank HP and Microsoft for engineering this fan on this laptop. You get two bottom side facing speakers. The sound quality is actually pretty good for an Ultrabook. It's not good like the Dell XPS 13, but good compared to many Ultrabooks out there. The sound is tight, and the mids and highs are well balanced. And here's a quick demo of the speakers playing on this laptop. We're going to start off at 50% and go up from there. If you're looking for one of the best Ultrabooks on the market, the HP Spectre X360 should be on your list. With good battery performance, a beautiful Full HD panel, and a spacious, comfortable keyboard, the Spectre X360 is a very good choice for an Ultrabook for 2015. The Dell XPS 13 is a good choice as well, but if you want the four multiple modes and the gorgeous full aluminum body, then you'll have to settle for the Spectre X360. And the best part of all is the pricing. It starts at a competitive price of $899 US, and that gets you a touchscreen panel unlike the XPS 13. The only downside was the trackpad can be overly sensitive at times. HP and Microsoft did a very good job at engineering this laptop for a good overall user experience. This completes my full review on the all new HP Spectre X360. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. All right, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.